Hello everybody, and today we are going to be reviewing this. No, not the camera, the head. So this is the Manfrotto 502AH video head. Now this video head comes in two versions, the AH version and the A version. I have the AH version here, right here. So the AH version basically means that it is a flat base mount, so it connects your tripod through the standard quarter inch uh, mounting screw. Whereas the A version means that the video head has a 75mm half bow mount, and it connects to your tripod obviously using the half bow mechanism. So the AH version is designed to fit most photography tripods, whereas the A version is meant for the more heavy duty video tripods with this bow mount system. So remember to get the correct version for your tripod, otherwise it simply will not fit. So this head on the box, it's mentioned that the head is made in China. So it's not written on the actual head itself, you can't really find made in China written on the head, but it is written on the box, so this head is made in China. Now I have no idea why Manfrotto tried to cheap out on this head, given the fact that even the cheaper heads like the 701HD was actually made in Italy. So despite being made in China, this head is still a very well built head. It's very solid, it performs very well. However, this is a very um, heavy head despite it having the Manfrotto bridging technology, which basically, which basically means you can actually look right through the head. In the middle, there's this huge bit cut out right in the middle of the head, probably to reduce weight. And that was the pan lock knob coming off. One thing about the pan lock knob is this, this knob right here locks the pan and the knob on the side locks the tilt. The pan lock comes off very, very easily. So it is quite prone to being lost on in the field. So all you have to do is turn it a little bit more and the entire knob just comes off. So that's one quirk about this head. Yeah, I wish they would just have the pan lock not, not come off. Trying to get it back in. There we go. So I'll walk you through the exterior of the head. On the side, as I showed you just now, there's the tilt lock. And then here's the lock for the handle. You can use this to change the angle, the position of the handle. A little bit more. So you can also remove the entire handle altogether. And you can also fix the handle on the other side of the head. Just get it out. The entire handle comes off. So there's a slot on the other side of the head for left-handed people. So let me just fix this handle back on. On both sides of the head, we can see that there are these accessory mounting screw threads over here as well. So you can mount your additional accessories such as a field monitor directly onto the head. On this side, we have the tilt drag um, control. So this basically controls the drag of the drag control of the tilting mechanism of the head. I have it set on minimum right now, so it's very loose. And you can have it on maximum, which is very, very stiff. So that's one good thing about this head. You can, uh, it has variable drag values, so you can change the amount of drag you want when operating the head. Now the pan drag is this red ring around the base here. So you can set it to minimum, which is basically no drag at all. So it's very, very loose. You can basically have the entire thing on free spin. I'll just hit myself which is basically no drag at all. It's very, very loose and you can have it on to um, maximum drag, which is very, very stiff. There it is. It's extremely stiff when it's on maximum drag. So you can just adjust the drag value of the pan and tilt according to um, your liking. So that's a great feature of this head. Now this is a very heavy duty head. It is a big head, so it's meant for bigger cameras like the C100. However, as you can see right here, um, your DSLRs will work just fine with this head. However, do bear in mind that if your setup is very light, for example, if you have a very light lens, this head has a fixed counterbalance system, so you cannot change the value of the counterbalance, and the counterbalance is actually quite powerful. So as you can see, basically the counterbalance is spring-loaded, it's not changeable, not variable. So basically the spring, when you tilt it to one end or the other, the spring-loaded counterbalance will try to pull the head back 
up as compensate for the frontal weight of your camera. So this, this is a feature meant for bigger cameras and very long lenses. So we have a very light camera, very light setup, and it's not properly balanced. When you tilt it to one end, it will launch your camera back up. So if a camera isn't heavy enough, not to worry, the, uh, the quick release plate is very, very long. So you can actually just position your camera more towards the front to make your entire rig more front heavy. So as to counter the counterbalance, and then it will work just fine. I have it too front heavy now. Move it back a little bit. It gives you very smooth panning and tilting, and it does its job just fine. Now the handle on the head is pretty long and big as well and it has a nice textured rubber grip so it's very comfortable to operate. Now I've used it on quite a few shoots now and it has worked very very well. Nice fluid well dampened pan and tilts every time. Now if you're coming from a smaller head like the 500AH or the 701HD, do keep in mind that this is a much heavy duty head, it's heavier on itself, so basically you won't be able to operate the head with a light touch like you would on the smaller head. So back on the smaller head, you can just um, operate the head using maybe just a finger or so and give it a very nice touch and it will just tilt and pan. But with this head, you actually have to put some effort into turning and panning. Now when you look at the back of the 502 HD head, you can see that the quick release button is actually on the back as opposed to the sides on some other heads. So being on the back, it makes it slightly easier for the operator to actually hit the button and release the plate. Now the 502 AH comes with the long quick release plate as you can see right here. Compared to the shorter ones you get on the standard Manfrotto quick release or on the 701 HD head series, you can see that this quick release plate is much longer than the shorter ones. However, this head is still compatible with the shorter heads. They will fit in just nicely. However, the smaller heads do seem to be slightly narrower than this big head. So we'll have to turn the locking knob slightly more. Now, one thing about this head is sometimes when you try to lock the quick release plate, Sometimes the locking knob can actually hit against your camera, preventing you from turning the knob any further, thus preventing you from properly securing your camera. Now this is very annoying because I didn't have this issue at all with the 701 HD head. You can basically do a 180 degree turn and it locks the entire thing nicely. So Manfrotto has actually put some thought into this because they probably know that the huge locking knob is going to bang against your camera. So you can actually pull the knob out and turn the knob independent of the actual screw itself. So at least they put some thought into this, however it doesn't really work very well because the screw is somewhat loose and when you try to turn the knob independent of the screw, the screw just happens to turn with the knob anyways. So it's not a foolproof solution, but at least they tried. But then it's still something that owners of this head will have to live with. Now, I don't really have much complaints about this head. It is a very good head. It does its job just fine. Um, however, one thing that uh, any user of this head will notice is that when you try to change the tilt drag too fast, sometimes it tends to make a clicking sound. It's probably the, the fluid elements inside making that clicking sound. It's not too loud. It is audible. But as long as you don't change your tilt drag setting, say in the middle of a take, um, it shouldn't be getting into your audio. So there we have it, a very nice heavy duty video head. This video head is actually pretty wide, so it can very, really support some pretty big equipment. I have no problems getting my one meter Kessler slider being supported by just this head right in the middle. It handles very nice with pretty much no wobble at all. I used to have a lot of wobble using my other smaller heads to support my sliders, but with this head, it's just fine. So I'm pretty sure you have no problems at all supporting a very heavy camera, very, he uh, very heavy rig, or even a crane on this video head. It's going to work just fine. So that is pretty much it about this head. Leave a question if you have one, leave a suggestion if you have one as well. Like the video if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't like it. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video.